So here's how I lost all of my income because my Google account got hacked and I had 273,000 subscribers on YouTube. So in this video, I'm just gonna cover how I got hacked, what the hackers actually try to do, and then the process for getting it back, and some things that you can do that I've learned now that I'm doing for security. If you enjoy my content and you want this channel to succeed, then make sure you go to lifeinthewest.com and see the options for supporting this channel. As a creator, I get emails all the time for collaborations. Companies send me stuff and say, here, would you promote my product? Usually they're offering like the product for free or they're offering some money, but it doesn't fit what I do. I'm extremely picky, or I have been <laughs> extremely picky on what I put in my channel. Well, I received an email that looked like it was very legit. It was extremely professionally put together. I'm not the, actually the only one that I know of that clicked on this email. And it looked like it was from Canon cameras. And they had a PDF on there that you looked at and it kind of walked through what they were offering and what they wanted you to do. I clicked on a button on that PDF because it was something that this company wanted you to install so they could interact with you securely. Now this is red flags all over the place, which I normally would be able to take care of. But it just so happened I was headed away on a two week vacation at the time. So when I looked at this, it was always during high stress. I was trying to make some videos and get them out right before I left. Um, so I had content going while I was gone. So I was super stressed. Everything was going in a rush. I looked at this and, and just said, you know what? I'm just gonna reply to them, do what they want. And then after I get back, I might have something, I'll look at what the reply is. That's usually how it works. When I clicked on that button, something flashed up on the screen for just a second and I noticed it was something very bad. It was the, it wasn't like a bad photo. It was the fact that my terminal opened and closed. I know enough about computers, I know that's bad. So I went into my Google account, anything that was open on the screen, I went into everything that I could and checked everything out. Now I made a huge mistake here, and I'll share with that, that with you as we get down this process. But what had happened was somehow it shared the current session that I was in, because I was logged into Google, and it shared that and sent it out over the internet to somebody uh, in Ukraine or Russia, I found out later. So when that happens, so I went in and I made sure I had everything set up for recovery, all my phone numbers and two-step verifications were on, all that stuff. When I went to bed that night, I was feeling pretty nervous, but I thought, well, hopefully it'll be okay. In the morning, I woke up at 5.30, looked at my phone, and I didn't have access to my email. And that was the scariest thing I have encountered in a long time. Here's one of the mistakes that I made that I will tell you not to make. Don't have the one email address that you use be attached to everything that you do. Don't have it be the recovery email for your bank account, your credit cards, your everything. Because when I woke up in the morning, I didn't have access to my Google account and I didn't have access to my bank account. There's nothing you can do with a bank like mine because it's fairly small until 8.30 in the morning. So until then, I, I got up, I was very panicky. I was like, oh no, my life could be over because I knew what they had access to. In the world we live in right now, your email is one of the ways that, you, that every company uses to identify who you are, that you are who you say you are. So I immediately called all my credit card companies, I called the phone company, everybody that I could that had anything important attached to that email and changed the email address on my account. I put a verbal password on everything that I could. And that, um, I believe that that helped because then nobody could call in, nobody could make a change. Everything was locked down online, so I couldn't use anything either. And then I went down and sat in, sat in the, uh, drive through at the bank until it opened. And I said, this is an emergency, you need to check my account. Uh, they had changed the password for getting into my online banking. So I just had them shut down the whole banking, all online banking. 
and then replace my debit cards. I didn't know if they had that or not. I was just kind of trying to do damage control all morning long. I couldn't access my, my Google account and I kept getting notifications from different companies because these people were trying to hack into everything they could as fast as they could. Then I went through everything that I could possibly think of that might have used that email and changed the password on everything. I changed, first, I changed the password on every other email account I had so and logged everybody out, which is what I should have done the night before. I believe I could have saved this from happening because I knew something had gone wrong and that's why I went into the account. I should have immediately gone in. You can go into your Google account, several other accounts as well, you can do this, and you can log everything out. So every session is over. That, that way, if they're currently using one of your old sessions, it's, it's logged out. They can't change anything in your account unless they know how to log in or they've already changed your password. But if I would have right then logged everybody out, logged back in, changed my password, and then logged everybody out again, I don't think they could have got into anything. Anyway, that's one, one thing that you look back on and say, man, should have done, should have done, right? They had complete control uh, of my YouTube account. And that's what they really wanted. They wanted that in my bank account, obviously. And immediately what they did is they took all my videos and put them on private and then took a whole bunch of videos that were on uh, SpaceX or something and ran them on a live stream feed on my channel. So this confused and changed the name and the URL of my channel, which confused all of my followers very greatly. So people were trying to find me on Facebook and everything. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm trying to do whatever I can. Uh, but after four or five hours, you, they have violated every rule in the book for Google or yeah, Google and YouTube. So YouTube will eliminate your account. They just shut it down. So, and then I think the hackers appealed it and got it back up about four hours later and it was up again for about four hours and then it shuts down again because they don't care they're just trashing your account they, they could care less well after that i had them kind of blocked from most of my stuff but what i heard from every company i talked to was well can i send you an email to verify who you are i'm going that's the problem if you send an email to that email address they can verify that they're me but i can't so that is, it is, it woke me up to a tremendous amount to how much our lives are online and how much we rely on email as a way to identify who we are. So be aware of that when you attach an email to a certain aspect of your life, that is a lifeline and protect that thing at all costs. And I'm going to share with you what I went to at the end. So. At that point, I thought, okay, now the next step is try to get this account back. First was damage control. Let's limit the damage. I know there's going to be a lot of damage, but we need to limit it. I also called the, um, I had LifeLock for 20 years um, that I've been paying. And so I contacted them and they put, uh, they told me how to put something on my credit report. I don't know what it does, but it's a, just makes it more difficult for somebody to, create a new account or a loan or whatever in your name. Then I started trying to get my Google account back. Now that is very tricky because there's no, nothing on Google anywhere that says this is how you get this back. It, it, in fact, I found videos on YouTube that said, you're done, it's over, you have lost everything. Basically, there's no way to do it. Well, then I finally found a video that told me, uh, uh, at least gave me an option. So I went on to X, and tweeted or X'd, whatever you call it, I posted on X and tagged at YouTube and at Team YouTube in my post and said, I was hacked, uh, here's my channel, you know, please help. And that's what you, the only way to reach them. This is the process that you have to go through. Now, this was, this sucked because I went on vacation. I was going camping. And for the first entire week, I couldn't do anything because I was sitting on the phone attempting to get this done. It's, so you tweet that out first. Then they have to reply back and they'll ask for your channel URL or ID. Now, there's a few things that you want to get. If you have a YouTube channel right now, 
that you want to put somewhere that is not connected with that email address, not don't put it on drive, you want to put this somewhere so you have these things. You want to have the ID of your channel. You want to have the ID of your AdSense. If you're getting money from YouTube, you have an AdSense account that they send the money to, and you want the ID of that. You need that. And then you want to save the URL of every video that you upload. So because they're going to ask for the last video that you uploaded. Basically, what Google has to do is they have to have you prove that it's your channel so that somebody couldn't say, oh, you know, somebody took my channel and it's not even yours. So they have to prove that it's your channel before they even go the next step. So first they get you want your channel ID, they check into it, then they will message you on X. They will send you a message. You can't message them. You have to wait till they message you and then you can reply to that message. And they will ask you certain details that you should know about your channel. And you have to tell them. Then, they, then they're going to... This is a process that's infuriating, but it's the way it is. You have to go through this. So they'll say, you got to try the recovery process, even though obviously I had already tried it you know, every single way, 14 ways. But what they'd done, the hackers had done with me, or in this case, I will call them hijackers because that's what you really need to use. The term you need to use with Google is hijackers. They didn't hack it, they hijacked it. I don't know why that's different, but anyway, they hacked it and hijacked it. But so when they'd gone in immediately, they had changed the phone numbers and everything in the recovery process. So there's no way for me to recover it because if I hit recover, it just sends it to their phones, right? So Google will make you go through this process. Here, attempt again on this certain page to get your, your uh, recover your account. And you gotta go through the whole process. You can't just try once and quit because they won't help you if you haven't done that. So you gotta go through every option, the phone, the email, the print, the every, you know, try another way, try another way, try another way till you get to the very end. Then come back and say, I've tried that, it didn't work. They've changed all of my uh, you know, recovery options, whatever. And at that point, they will finally send you a link to a form that's a recovery form. And that's where you need that information I said earlier. You're going to need those IDs. You're going to need an email you have access to. And you're going to need to put in as much information as you can possibly think of in there. You don't need all of it, but the more you have, the better, because you're proving that it's yours. So the last video that you uploaded, a couple of URLs of videos they uploaded or that were on your channel and go all the way down through that thing and submit it. Now, uh, this was something I didn't realize, but that was the step I was worried about, like not, because I didn't have some of that information saved somewhere and I couldn't access it without getting into my account. So I was afraid if I submitted that form without enough information, they weren't gonna get back to me, and which may be the case, I don't know. But when I finally did submit the form, it was like eight hours later, they got back to me, and then after you submit the form, they're gonna email you. So then you're talking to an actual person, well, talking, emailing with an actual person at Google or YouTube. Now that is, that is a much easier step because they'll tell you what to do. Then you have to try several other things. You gotta give them your IP address, you know, from where you're at, and they'll give you another recovery form and go through that infuriating thing and try it again, even though you know you're not gonna get in. You still have to do it then email them back and say, I tried that. And at some point in that process, they, they finally decided to reset my whole account and then give me a, a way to access it. I can't remember even what, how it was to access. I think it just sent me an e email link or something. That took me seven days. Now I'll share with you, there's some fallout of this. So it took me seven days to get my channel back. Everything was still there because all the videos, they didn't delete all the videos, they just turned them all on private. So you can turn them all back to public, right? And that's, but the problem is, is after seven days, it's like deleting your content and then putting it, taking it back out. <laughs> it doesn't get any views. So everything that I was getting views on, all the money I was getting from views went nothing and still is nothing, basically. It just, you can just see on every video right here, 
is where I was hacked and the video gets no views after that, you know, a hundred views, literally. So that, that has been a struggle. Now I'm dealing with the aftermath. This has only been a couple weeks. So I'm dealing with how to set this up, how to get going again, how to figuring out how in the world to get my channel back going again after taking all this time. But in the middle of that, I've actually, I changed how I structure all of my content and email addresses and everything like that. All the stuff I've said is stuff, if anything happens, first of all, when you get an email from somebody, and I do this 90% of the time, I just need to do it 100% of the time. Any email that you get, even if it's your best friend, before entering anything, downloading anything, clicking on anything, go to the top where it says from, click the little down arrow, and you can see their email address. This one was from Canon. The, the email was from Canon. Everything said Canon, but when you click this, it was like Awara, you know, at uh, AOL.com or something like that. It wasn't, it's not uh, Canon.com. You have to really be careful. Click on those, read the, f the from, and if it's not somebody from that company, that URL does not match, then don't trust it. Don't trust anything at all anyway. Play it safe, okay? So what I've done now, um, and then uh, again, like I didn't do, but if you suspect that something has been hacked, like my laptop was hacked at that point, probably with malware as well, then you definitely wanna go into your accounts, log everybody out immediately, log back in, change your password, and then log everybody out so that there's no open sessions. So they have to actually have your password. And if you have your new password and you didn't put it in your email somewhere, they'll probably won't happen. The hack won't happen, okay? So what I've done now, after getting my channel back and everything, dealing with the aftermath, I'm, I am putting to, together some ways to try to make up my income. So I'm, I'm having some t-shirts made. This was already something that was on the back of my mind I need to do. Now I'm forced. I have zero income. So now I have to, uh, I'm creating some t-shirts. I'm, I'm, I created a community um, on lifeinthewest.com so the, that I can try to have supporters um, at, from there because I don't know what else to do. I've got to have some products to sell. I can't rely on Google income because it's gone and I have no idea, even though I'm starting to post again, working on new content, I don't know how fast that's gonna come back. So it's kind of, you, you can't rely on that whole, all the way. And my advice would be, as you get going, build some, uh, like one other source of income somewhere that you have access to from a separate email that are not connected. You don't have, this one is the, recovery email for that one. That does not a good idea because that will, then they can just recover this one from that one, right? So I've also changed my email to Proton. I went, I did a lot of research and I'm trying to get away from having Google have everything of mine. I think when you have a company like Microsoft that's so big or Google that's so big, People learn how to write programs to get into, to hack those certain specific things. When you have something like Proton Email, which is, you have to pay for, but it's encrypted far more than Google has encrypted Gmail. It doesn't run through Google servers and it's not common. So because it's not a common thing, there isn't a lot of hackers that, you know, work on that. So if they get access, I've kind of limited it all down. If somebody gets access to my Google account, they can't access anything else. They're not gonna get my bank account. They're not gonna get anything. Okay, so that's, those are definite reasons to do what I, what I have just done. Separate it out so it's not all on the same. So you don't have your documents in there and you don't have that email as your, the one everybody talks to you on. And you don't have that same email that everybody uses to, you know, collab with you or all that stuff. You need to diversify that stuff a little bit. Okay, so in closing, I will say that it took me seven days to get it back. I'm not sure when or how I will get the income rolling back into my Google, my YouTube channel. It took me two years to get it to the point it was. Now it's at zero, so I don't know if that means 
you don't get it back unless you're a whiz person. It took me forever to get it. It took me two years to get it built up to that. And I don't know if it comes back. That I can tell you. But seven days to me felt like an eternity. About on the fourth day that I had been hacked, somebody contacted me who had 240 or 212,000 subscribers. So pretty close to what I had. And they had been hacked by the same email. So I told them the process that I was in the middle of and had done, and they are still in the middle of trying to get their channel back. They still have not gotten their channel back. This has been three or four weeks. So I'm not sure if what happened to me was different in some way that they gave me my channel back sooner or whether this is just kind of a random thing, like, like if you get the wrong person at YouTube, it takes four weeks to get it back. Uh, I just don't know. But don't count on the three or four or seven day turnaround on this. It could be months talking to a couple people that I know that have been hacked. So I know this wasn't very encouraging, but I hope it enlightened you. I hope you take it seriously work hard to keep these things a little bit more separated than I did, and always stay vigilant. If you're in a hurry, like I was, do not make a decision to download anything, click on anything, whatever. You wait until you have time to look at it and think, because if you're not thinking, that's when you get in trouble. That's when I get in trouble. That's my story about how I got hacked from YouTube and lost my 273,000 subscribers for seven days. I'm Trinity Vandenacre. Until next time, God bless.